Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and we have some serious business to address, which is why I'm wearing my serious business dress. So a little bit of background. I started this YouTube channel and my Instagram, just.my.typewriter, in about October of 2018. I was taking a class in my master's program at the time where I had to develop some sort of digital content for a specific niche on the internet. And my friend Don, who you've seen in quite a few of the original videos on this YouTube channel, he and I decided to start a YouTube channel and an Instagram for our typewriters. We both only had one, so I don't know where we thought that was going, but it was a really cool way to kind of start this process. And initially, I was just gonna do it for that class. I really only had to make two or three videos, a couple of podcasts, and post some pictures on Instagram. But after I finished that class, I kind of really liked making those videos, especially when I was making them with my friends like Dawn and Marcus and a few of the other people you've seen on this channel. So I kept going. And at the time, I was really only making about a video a month at the most. It was really inconsistent and it was really only when I had time. I wasn't getting many views on any of my videos. I didn't have very many subscribers. It was just kind of a fun hobby. I also had a low number of followers on my Instagram and I didn't really know where it was going. Then I filmed a video on reviewing the Quirky Writer S, which is a mechanical keyboard you can get to use with things like your phone or your iPad which I have here. And that video where I did a review and an unboxing kind of got a lot of attention. It's my highest viewed video on this YouTube channel and that's because it doesn't just serve typewriter people but also people who were interested in that product from a tech perspective. And after that video kind of got a little bit of interest, I started getting quite a few more views on my YouTube videos and on my Instagram, just.my.typewriter. Now, I never intended to be a YouTube influencer. In fact, I'm still not a YouTube influencer. But because of my subscriber count and my follower count on Instagram, companies seem to think that I am. And that has led to me getting some spam messages from companies who want me to promote their products and services and talk about their brands on my channel and on my Instagram. Now, I'm actually qualified to talk about this topic, unlike a lot of the other topics on this YouTube channel. I have written my doctoral dissertation on YouTube influencers and the impact they actually have on their audiences when they're selling a product. But personally, I have never partnered with a brand in any capacity to make any content on this YouTube channel. All of my opinions and reviews of things have been completely my own personal opinion. I've never been given money for anything that I've done this on this channel. In fact, I did a video with Simple Green where I actually used their product and they just sent me free product, but there was never an agreement that I would get paid for that or that I was required to make any content for that. I just told them how much I liked their brand and they sent me some things to play with. And that is probably about the extent of where I'll ever go with making content on YouTube related to specific brands and products. But people keep on trying. I've received messages on my Instagram asking me to promote things like gambling games, weird plastic free cups, things that involve my favorite little gremlin like doggy bandanas. It's very confusing. And realistically on YouTube or on Instagram, whenever you have a significant amount of followers, you're kind of a target for companies to send you messages relating to, well, you could get more followers if you paid to use our services. You could promote this product to your audience. And it's all a little bit confusing. On YouTube, once you hit a certain number of subscribers, it's roughly about a thousand subscribers, and a certain number of watch hours, and that number is much higher, you become eligible for the YouTube Partner Program. Now, I wanna be completely transparent with you here. I have hit those benchmarks with this YouTube channel, which means that I was able to apply for the YouTube Partner Program. That means that they will start counting every time people watch ads on my YouTube channel toward making money for me from those videos. I receive a small commission off of the number of times people watch those ads on the beginning of my videos, and that builds up and builds up until I reach about $100 of ad revenue, and then I get a payout. Now, I've been monetized for a while and have made like $0 off of it. So it hasn't made me any money, but it has kind of put me into this category where companies reach out to me and ask me to look at their products. And after I had a lot of success reviewing the Quirky Writer S keyboard, I actually also personally reached out to a company that I thought would be a really great way to kind of extend that trajectory for my YouTube channel. I wasn't asking for money to do a review. I was just asking if there would be an opportunity for me to look at one of their keyboards that was typewriter inspired and see if I could do a review on my YouTube channel because you guys seem to enjoy those. 
And here's what happened. So I reached out to a company called New Key, and they had a specific product called the Rymic Keyboard, which looks a lot more like a typewriter than even the Quirky Writer S does. I had been following them on Instagram, but their keyboards are hundreds of dollars and I can't afford to do that. So I did reach out to them and ask if they had any way that I could find a way to review this product as a typewriter inspector and typewriter collector. I don't know what word that belongs in that sentence. So I sent them an email in about January of 2021 and I said, my name is Sarah and I run the YouTube channel, Just My Typewriter. I make videos regarding typewriters, typewriter tests and crafts, and I made videos regarding mechanical keyboards that are designed to look like typewriters. I've made a video regarding the Quirky Writer S keyboard, which has 7,000 views on YouTube. It has more now. Additionally, I have an Instagram following of almost 2,000 followers who look for me to, for typewriter advice and content. I'm interested in your mechanical keyboard, specifically the Rymic typewriter keyboard. I was wondering if you might be willing to send me a keyboard to review on my YouTube channel and Instagram. Looking at these keyboards from the perspective of a typewriter collector and user is a different approach. And many of my typewriter collector followers within the community are interested in these products and would like some solid comparisons between them and a traditional typewriter. Thank you for your time and consideration and I look forward to hearing from you. And I sent them a link to that original Quirky S video. Now, if you feel like this is slimy, I totally understand. And that's why I'm trying to be as transparent as possible here, that I did reach out to a company with the intention of looking at a product to review on my channel, but I never asked for any sort of commission off of selling that product. I never asked to partner with the brand to get any sort of specific following for that content. I just was kind of shooting my shot and seeing if anything happened out of it. And they did email me back. So later that same month, I got an email back from New Key and they said, hi Sarah, greetings from New Key. Thank you so much for your preference for our Rymic keyboard. So sorry for any inconvenience we have caused. Our current media samples have been sent out. Would you mind for a coupon code for payment? You could let us know what country you're in and where we could ship it to awaiting your response, many thanks. And I said that I was in the US and they did offer me a coupon code which was about 20% off of the new key typewriter keyboard. I can't even say that right. I did not end up purchasing that product. It was out of my price range. This typewriter keyboard itself was a gift to me. There's no way that I could afford to spend that kind of money on a product that I was looking to mostly use in type tests on my YouTube channel. Now again, I completely understand if you do not feel that this is appropriate and I just want to be as transparent as possible because I do have a little bit of knowledge of what it's like to run a channel and an Instagram with a little bit of a following and I get messages all day long about products that are not related to the content on my YouTube channel and I specifically only want to talk about things that would be relevant to typewriter users. Things like cleaning products, things like mechanical keyboards that look like typewriters. And that was the extent of any conversations I've personally initiated with companies related to some sort of product I could look at specifically for your viewing. And I learned a lot in that process and the thing that I learned is I don't want to be that kind of content creator. I'm doing this for fun and that was a little bit too real of a response in relation to that specific typewriter keyboard and then I forgot about it for a while. And then as I was going through my spam folder, I got a request from a company that asked me to review a typewriter keyboard on my YouTube channel. And I was just a little bit too intrigued, so I kind of went with it just to see what would happen. So in September of 2021, I did receive this email in my spam folder on my Gmail, which I link in the bottom of all of my videos in case any of you are interested. And here's what they said. Greetings, I hope all is well with you. I would like to send a typewriter keyboard, which is actually wireless, and a wired keyboard that can be used with PC, Mac, iOS, Android, and many other devices nowadays. I think this would be a good product to introduce to your audience since it can be used in a modern world technology while keeping the heritage of typewriters. So clearly they've at least seen some of my videos and know that I do something with typewriters. You can take a look at the picture attached and decide if you would like to review this product. If you decide to review this product, I can offer you an affiliate link for your viewers and you get a commission, 2.5% of each sale. On top of that, I will offer a 23% discount off the limited listed price to your audience. Additionally, to sweeten the deal, I will pay you $25 on top of the commission. So win for your audience, win for you, win for me. This product right now is 
not available for sale but will launch soon. It will sell for $150. Please let me know your thoughts. Thanks a lot. And they attached a picture of a typewriter keyboard. Now, I got this email and I was a little bit intrigued. You want to send me a $150 keyboard for free for me to play with and maybe I get to destroy it on my YouTube channel? I'm in, but I was a little bit taken aback by the discussion of a monetary reward in that email and I was a little bit afraid of what that would actually mean regarding my personal opinion on the product if I actually ever got that product. So I did email them back with this response. I'd be happy to review and try the product. I will not recommend it to my audience unless I like the product. I very much want to keep the authenticity of my opinion and review it from the typewriter collector's perspective. My name, just my typewriter. I felt like that was an appropriate response. I didn't say yes, I didn't say no, and I said I'm only interested if I'm allowed to have my own personal opinion about that product. And they did respond back to that. So a little while later they said, hi, thank you for your reply. Yes, absolutely, it is your decision to decide whether you would like to recommend it to your audience or not. Allow me a couple days and I will put together a couple things and update you about the next steps. So then I forgot about the email. Then a few weeks went by and I emailed them back out of curiosity and I said, hello there, it's been a bit and I was wondering if you'd put together the next steps of this process as you had mentioned in your previous email. Then they emailed me back a day later and spelled my name wrong even though I sign it at the bottom of all my emails and said, hello Sarah, without an H. I'm so sorry for the delay. I have been slammed by work overload. I will surely work on the proposal and get back to you. Please allow me some time. I really appreciate you following up with me. Rest assured I will contact you soon with the next steps within a week. Then I got a little bit curious. I thought the photo attached to the first email was kind of suspicious looking and I was pretty sure I had seen that photo before in other listings. So I first started by googling the name of the company, which I will not include in any of these screenshots or list in any way. I do not want to get them into any trouble and that's not why I do these videos. So I did look into the company and I couldn't find anything regarding any companies with that name. And then I took that photo and started just googling typewriter keyboards in the image search on Google to see if I could find any other photos that looked similar to that and see where those products were listed. And I ran into a ton on Amazon. In fact, I ran into dozens and dozens and dozens of posts on Amazon using this exact same photo selling a typewriter keyboard. And all of the company names related to this typewriter keyboard were also weird names. And the typewriter keyboards themselves either had all five star reviews or zero reviews, and I found that just a little bit fishy. I was pretty sure I was gonna get scammed if I gave these people my address, so I didn't know what to do next. So I did the next logical thing and emailed them. So about a month goes by and I send them this email. Hello again, I've been doing some additional research into the company and the product you mentioned in your previous emails. I can't find any website or information about your company and I've noticed the same product shot of the typewriter you sent me on other listings on Amazon. I'm not sure if this indicates the product you were looking for me to review is legitimate or not. I was wondering if you might be able to have some information on this. And then they emailed me back really quickly. Hello Sarah, spelled right this time. We have not launched our product yet. We are still finalizing the product listing for our Amazon store. Once the product listing is done and live, I will send it to you to look at and then you can decide if you'd like to test it out or not. We've been behind in many things due to COVID and the effects on the supply chain. I hope you can understand. They've still never signed their name for me, so I don't really know who I'm talking to. And then they never emailed me back. And that was in October of 2021, and their listing is still not live on Amazon, at least under that company's name. So what did I learn from this process? First of all, again, I want to be completely transparent with you where I am in regards to making these YouTube videos. It started out as a really fun hobby. During the pandemic, I started making more videos and I started releasing them at least once a week. And it did help me get more views and subscribers on my YouTube channel. And it did eventually help me to get into the YouTube partner program, but I have not made any money off of the ads that run on the beginning of my videos yet. I haven't hit any of those pay scale points to make ad revenue 
off of those. So skip as many as you want. I'm not here to make money off of my YouTube channel or off of my Instagram. It started out as a fun hobby. It'd be nice if it was enough to buy me a nice coffee every once in a while. Now in regards to products, I did want to give you that information regarding the fact that I have reached out to a company before so that you know that yes, I am trying to get things that might be interesting to my audience and find a way to review them but I want to do it in a way that is ethical and that maintains my authenticity of opinion. I learned a lot in that first experience regarding the Rymec keyboard. I was really interested in that product, but I learned that that was not the way I wanted to find a way to review products on my channel. It just felt like a really weird thing that happened. I never used that coupon code. I never looked more into those keyboards. I just had an iffy vibe off of that initial email correspondence. And then when I got this seemingly spam message about gaining commission off of product, I was really turned off by the process of it. I didn't like that they were discussing money and advertising a product to my audience where I would make money off of that advertisement. That seems like it really would skew your opinion on that product. You might say things that you don't actually believe about that product in order to convince people to buy it, and I do not want to be that kind of person. Any product that I use or recommend on this channel, including typewriter parts or ribbons or cleaning products, all come from me actually experiencing those things myself on my typewriter journey and are things that I really love to recommend. I'll talk about how much I love Simple Green all day long, whether or not they send me a free t-shirt or not. So that's a little bit of my journey and a little bit of a behind the scenes look at what it's like to kind of run a channel that has a little bit of an audience. Now, I do not have a large enough audience to have affiliates or partnerships or sponsorships with any brand. And if I did, I would have to properly disclose that both in the description of the video and verbally. That is a rule by the FTC when you are advertising products to your audience, especially if that product is advertising to a younger audience. And if you want to read more about this, you can contact me about my dissertation on YouTubers. <laughs> but I have not hit that and I do not intend to hit a place in this YouTube hobby of mine where that becomes a serious consideration when I'm working on content and videos. I like making things that are fun. I like making things in my own time. I like filming these videos about a year in advance and then waiting a really long time to release them, which is just not really convenient for companies that are looking to advertise. And to be fair, there's not a lot of people looking to advertise to typewriter collectors specifically. If you have any questions about what it's like to have this kind of hobby of making content on the internet or questions regarding anything I've made in the past, please feel free to DM me on Instagram at just.my.typewriter or ask me questions in the comments. I really want to be transparent about this. I want to make sure that you know where I'm at and that you never feel like I'm saying anything that is untrue or in any way swayed by some sort of weird behind the scenes YouTuber magic. It's just not the case for me, but I do want you to have all the information in order for you to make that decision as to whether or not I'm authentic or not for yourself. So that was a weird one and I hope you don't leave me after this because I really like making videos on the internet. If you're interested in more typewriter specific content or you have questions, you can watch more videos on this YouTube channel. I also have an Instagram at just.my.typewriter. Feel free to send me a DM on there or leave me a comment down below or send me an email in the email I have listed in the description box of this video. I want to thank you all so much for watching today and remind you that you're just my type writer.